computer was like, got it. My computer was like, you know, what's a really good time to just start doing an update, like a minute before you're supposed to start a webinar. So yay, fun with that. Um, hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. I'm so excited that you're joining me today for using sign language without being fluent part two. So let me do a small intro. My name is Rachel Janini. I'm an early childhood educator. I'm an advocate. I'm a video blog host. I'm sitting crisscross applesauce, so let me get not crisscross. Okay. And uh, today we'll be talking about sign language. I am a sign language enthusiast. If you've ever seen me speak before on this topic, aka part one, um, you will know that I use sign all throughout my childhood growing up, my sister's Down syndrome. She didn't obtain speech till she was three or four. As a result, it was our main form of communication. And then after that, I went on to use sign language in like church and Special Olympics, and then ultimately became studied as a sign language interpreter. And then went into the classroom with that. It's probably my best tool in my toolbox because it's kind of incredible. Like uh, if you've never heard the spiel, you know, hold on to your feet, socks, shoes, all those things, because here's the deal. Um, we all learn differently. We all have our own unique way of learning. Personally, if you tell me something, yeah, that maybe I'll remember. Sure, 30% chance. If I do it, 99% chance. And if I see it and do it, oh, then, then, it, then I got it. Our children come to us as mysterious little boxes. We don't know how they learn best, but also they don't know how they learn best. No kiddo is gonna come up to you after a rug time and be like, Miss Kimberly, that was a really great workout, but um, here's the deal. Next time, can you be more visual? Cause if you could do more visual, Miss Kimberly, that'd be great. Like no one's gonna come up and tell you how they learn best when they're, I don't know, four. So as educators, our job is for us to give them as much as information as possible so they can obtain and retain information. So I may have mentioned a few times that this is part two. If you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't see part one. It's okay, don't worry. Um, we are going to do a slight bit of revisiting part one because we will need it for today, but um, you're all good, so relax. Other things that you should know about today. I've recently started comparing all of my professional development like a buffet. I'm going to give you a lot of information from like, the breadsticks to the cheesecake. You are going to get a lot of stuff. And it is almost at the end of the year. Spring break is upon us if you have one. And you may be like, whoa, this is a lot. It is a lot. But I ask that you please do not shut me down because it's a lot of information. However, come take whatever you want where you're at. At the end, there will be like a doggy bag for you to take things to go. And as we go throughout, I will show you options for if you just wanted a nimble or a bite, or if you wanted the full course. Also, there will be like a drive-through option. These food analogies are not because I'm hungry, but because I think that they make the most sense. So with that, let's get started. So when we get done today, if you are talking to somebody and they say, oh my goodness, how was your ASL workshop? You say, no friend, I didn't take an ASL workshop. I took a sign language workshop, signed English. ASL stands for American Sign Language. There's French Sign Language and Spanish Sign Language. And if you wanna go down a really fun rabbit hole, there's Kenyan Sign Language, which is absolutely beautiful. With that being said, um, it has its own syntax and grammar. I always use the example of asking for the bathroom. In ASL, you would say, bathroom where? Well, and when you say it, you say, where's the bathroom? So we're going with signed English. Okay, so on that note, we are gonna be talking today a little bit about rug time, a little bit about transitions, and we're going to be wrapping it all up with a little bit more focus on behavior modification because, oh friends, we all could use some good behavior modification this time of year. I am also in the classroom part-time. I use behavior modification a lot. The other thing that I use a lot is literacy. 
uh, that will be our focus of today, specifically within that rug time center uh, setting. And the reason why is super simple. We want nothing more than for our children to become lifelong, passionate readers, right? Well, we start that even though we may never sit there and read a book, or excuse me, have a child read a book to us, we are setting all of those early foundations. And the first off is emergent literacy, the idea that literacy is everywhere you are participating in literacy. And literacy is fun. We want our kiddos to build a love of literacy because you don't like doing what you don't like to do. And when it's something as crucial as literacy, we want to make sure that they are actively engaged. One thing about literacy is it very much tends to be a spectator sport, if you will. You read to the children. You are, you are the one giving them information of these very abstract symbols in a concrete way. However, when we add sign language to it, then all of a sudden they become an active participant. There was a really wonderful study done out of Gallaudet University I believe it was Gallaudet, that um, just tracked children who were using sign early on and found that the words that those children learned in sign were those first words that they learned to read. And the reasoning why makes a lot of sense. They have a relationship with those words. They physically touched those words, if you will. So it makes sense that those were the first ones that they were able to grasp the concepts of. But let's get to rug time. Because cool thing is, you are aware that you have a television show, right? Like, you got 20 minutes, 15, 10 if they're squirrely, that you are, you are the best Miss Rachel possible. You are singing, you are giving them information, they are engaged. And with all that being said, this time of year, they know the routine. This time of the year, like, they are pretty much like, we know what to do. We know the songs. Let's mix it up. We got a few months left. Let's change things. Let's re-engage them because that's one thing that sign language really does. And there's a really great chance that you use already a lot of sign unbeknownst to you. So, fun little fact, if you're not aware, there are two kinds of sign. There's iconic sign, sign to look like what they are, and there's arbitrary signs, signs that you have no idea why they are this way they are. I always use the example of this animal. It's a cat. Why is it a cat? There's whiskers. This dad, mom, why is this dad and mom? That's a great question. I don't know. I always tell the story about this, the very funny gentleman at a conference once who said, oh, men are really smart and women talk too much. He was clever. Um, so, most iconic signs, though, tend to fall within a few categories. There's animals, there's clothing, there's nature, and there's food. All things that children really talk a lot about. And you probably use sign all the time when you're doing something as simple as a finger play. Again, that idea of getting those children re-engaged, think about it. You're at rug time, and they're getting squirrely. They're touching each other, they're moving around, can't really get them focused. And immediately you go, five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed, right? You know, you know the song. Ready? What do you think the sign for monkey is? Oh my gosh, yeah. What do you think the sign for call is? Yeah. What do you think the sign for jumping is? Oh my gosh. What do you think the sign for fall is? Yes, you are already, unbeknownst to you, doing almost an entire song in sign language. And what happens when you do that? When you start that finger play, those children, they're now focused. This is focused. They're not focused. They're re-engaged. They're watching you. They're looking at your hands. They're doing it along with you. Why is that? Well, you are now engaging them. You're not talking at them, you're talking with them. You are now making them an active participant in this rug time. They're four, they're jumping, they're falling, they're monkeys, they're calling. Same school of thought comes when we're doing literacy. So one thing that I've kind of omitted 
from this workshop originally is calendar, but I will show you calendar. Calendar is four down, four across. So if you have a calendar helper, you can say, or if it's time, you can be like, it's time for a calendar. Calendar, makes sense, it's iconic. It looks like what it is. The reason why I stopped doing calendar is for a couple reasons. The main one are the numbers in sign language. I am going to, and feel free to count along with me, we're gonna to count to 10, okay? Ready? And I'm gonna count it in sign language. One, two, three, four, five. Ready? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. We got, we got that ready. If I was to show this to a small child, what number would they say this is? Three. A hundred percent. They would say this is three. And you know what? When you are doing one-to-one -one correspondence, it is three. It is three. And this is three. And this is three. And this is three. And this is three. When we're doing numbers for the sake of our littles and something, again, as extremely abstract as math, we want to give them as many tools as possible to be successful. That's why we use manipulatives. So with that being said, count on both hands. Count on both feet. Count all the things you want. Just don't count in sign language. Because again, we want them to be able to make those connections. So with calendar, if you are choosing to do calendar, love it. We're just gonna do some very basic side. We're not gonna go into the months or the holidays because those are things that are not just part of the buffet, it's the buffet and then you like, I don't know, maybe they cater and come to your house. So we are gonna do days of the week though because this is really great. You all, because of my amazing friend Karen, gave you um, some slides for this presentation. And one of those slides includes a sign language chart of alphabets, okay? Oh, mango tea is not good. Note to self. Um, I was trying something new. I bought a healthy tea that's a probiotic, not tasty, um, okay. So days of the week are really simple. They are simply the letters. So if you go to your chart, this letter is letter M. Mm, you know what the wonderful thing is? This is iconic. It looks like what it is. Here are your humps. It's a cursive M. M. Ready? So when we say the sign Monday, we make the M. It faces us and we go around Monday. Now Tuesday starts with what letter, friends? T. -t, 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 -t. Sadly, this is not iconic. It does not look like what it is, but it's a T and we turn around T -t 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 Tuesday. Wednesday, it's iconic. It looks like what it is. W, flip it around. Wednesday. Thursday, just like how you would write an abbreviation for Thursday, would be T H Thursday. Friday, sadly, not iconic, but it's a Friday. <laughs> Friday. Saturday, s -s 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 Saturday, and Sunday, Sunday. Mm. The, yeah, <laughs> Mary, your enthusiasm for Sunday is like, I, I'm just gonna call you on Sundays just to see you go like Sunday. So if you happen to sing, um, so ready? If you happen to sing the Days of the Week song and you've been singing it, I don't know, since August, they probably know it by heart. They're probably bored with it. Let's mix it up. It starts by simply giving them one day. Just be like, friends, this is how we say it at Monday in sign language. Just teach them Monday and then say, friends, this day when we sing our alphabet song, we're gonna sign this part, this letter. And every day, just add on another letter. And then eventually it'll look like this. There's Monday and there's Tuesday. There's Wednesday and there's Thursday, there's Friday and there's Saturday, and then there's Sunday, days of the week. Wait, days of the week. Days, make a D, the sun goes up and it goes down. Days of the week. One finger, if it's one week, two weeks, three weeks. But remember, we're not doing numbers, so week. Days of the week. Okay. Let's jump in 
to the crucial part of this literacy, because this is what I really want to talk about today. Again, one major component of all of our rug times is a read aloud. And you may think, well, it's just always been that way. There's a reasoning why. Again, we have the amazing task of building this love of literacy. That is our number one job. That's why we make read alouds exciting. That's why we do so much literacy, because we want them to be enthralled. We want them to be excited because the earlier they start reading, the more likely that they are going to hit that third grade reading standard. And if you're not familiar with the, what the third grade reading standard is, it's the idea by, that by essentially the age of eight, you have all the tools of literacy in your tool belt and you are no longer learning how to read, but reading to learn. You know, while you're learning to read, you know all that. Now you're just reading to learn. You're able to pick topics and expand your mind and become critical thinkers. And it's incredible because they've shown that if by eight, you are now fully grasped, ready to go out there and take on the world, you're more likely to hit the reading level when you were a junior in high school. And if you hit your junior level of reading standard when you're a junior, you're more likely to graduate the following year. Going on, if you graduate from high school, you're more likely to go to college, you're less likely to be incarcerated, you're less likely to suffer from substance abuse, you're less likely to become a teen parent, and you're more likely to go on and, I don't know, do more magical things in the world. So, it's up to us to get them primed, pumped, and ready to take it on, and we do that every day. So, if you were not with us before, again, no worries. If you have, this is gonna be a fun little reminder. Little review. Let's pick a good color, we'll pick blue. The buffet is officially open. So, I've demoed before how I introduce letters in my classroom. I will introduce what it looks like. Today we're learning the letter B. This is an uppercase B, and this is a lowercase B. We do this. This is great. Ready? But this is the extra stop, extra step that I add. I say, okay, friends, I'm going to show you how to say B with your hands in sign language. Everyone, show me B. Okay, perfect. I love everybody playing along. So, what sound does the letter B make? B. B, 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 B. Now here's the deal. You can be your awesome self with this. You wanna have a dance party? Ba 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 ba. You like classical? Ba 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 ba. Whatever. You wanna go high? Ba 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 ba. Low? Ba 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 ba. Get the bees moving around. Just be like friends. Let's let's have a bee party. Ba 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 ba. Whatever. Do you? Cool thing is when we're crossing this midline. Cross lateral integration, the more options we have to make our bees move around the room, our myelin, our right and left hand side of our hemisphere is connecting. We're getting a brain workout. We're helping those uh, neurons go really fast back and forth, which will ultimately help with reading. So here's the deal. We start with ba, 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 all right? Simple, okay? We now have the letter. We now know the sound, ba, 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 but now for all of our friends that are kinesthetic learners, they are now an active participant. Ba, 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 cool. As educators, we also make a list of those words that start with that letter sound. So we're just gonna make a few small ones. We're gonna say bear and bird. Oh, that's a weird looking R, sorry about that. We're just gonna say Baron Bird. We're just gonna, we're just gonna do some today. I love that Mar Mara's like, Bumblebee, you're totally right. There's a reason why we're just doing two and you'll see why. Um, so bear, ready? Kids love bear, you know why? Grrr. And then this is always the time that you can ask those amazing higher order thinking questions. Why is this the sign for bear? Grrr. And they will tell you because it's a bear hug, it's big and furry, it goes grr. I don't know, bear. Ready? Show me, you guys show me what you think the sign for bird is, if you had to guess. Oh my gosh. 
Tammy Larson, are you fluent in sign? This is Bert. <laughs> Tweet, 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 Yes, and why is it the sign for bird? It's a little beak. But you know what's really cool? Duck. Quack, 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 because it's a big beak. So bird. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Okay, perfect. And what if we just say that? We just stop there. That's huge. Now, you've already given children this connection to be. Ba, 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 ba. This sound. I have to start inserting this video into this slide. My... So I'm a curriculum coordinator at a school and my daughter's in that school and her infant toddler class, or excuse me, her toddler twos class, I work with the teacher and I showed her how to do this and how to use sign. My, no joke, almost two year old, she'll be two in a week and a half, can do almost all of her letters in sign with the sound. Not because like we just stay home and read all the time, but because she will have two weeks because I every letter is two weeks of every day being like ba, ba, k, k, da, da, da. like it's so incredible when our children have one million neurological connections being made every single second and they literally will fall asleep and wake up like rocket science it is unbelievable so with that being said try it out because now we have bear and bird easy smeezy iconic love it know it Let's just learn two more. Let's three more, sorry. I, I bet you know where I'm going with this as soon as you see brown, black, and blue. Hmm. I'm going to give you a little mnemonic device. Oh, B-R-O-W, and that would be helpful. Thank you. Friends, I was in infant toddler class today with many, many very loud babies who had a lot of ideas about things and the head, it's not working too well. Thank you. Otherwise it'd be brow. <laughs> But brown, ready? Mnemonic device time. If it's a skin tone or it's on your skin, then you put it on your skin. The amazing thing is that, that chart that Karen gave you of all of the letters, this is where they come in handy because it's going to be the letters of each letter. So we know B already, right? B -b 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 brown. One more time, brown. Now black is hot. Black, black, black. And blue, blue's not on your skin, unless you're a Smurf. That's not going on, so blue. Shake it to the side. Really fast, we'll just go through all the colors because colors are also something you do all the time. We can focus on it another day, but so we have brown. We can do tan, because tan's on your skin. Um, R, red, put it on your lips, because you wear the lipstick. P, pink. Put it on your lips, wear the lipstick. P, purple, shake it to the side. If it's not on your skin, you shake it. Green, you shake it. Yellow, you shake it. Orange, you squeeze it. And it feels really satisfying if you do this. Um, black and white, you're throwing off all the color, white. But in this case, we're working on this letter. So here's the deal. If you have done the letter B, awesome. And if you've taken up some of these friends again, just doing the sign is enough, but we're gonna make this read aloud interactive. So we want to teach these. Now let me show you the different versions. This with the B, ba ba ba, that's the drive through. That's the, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna quick, dirty, take it home and eat it. Let's do for just getting a salad. Forgive me, I'm going to put on my teacher hat and I'm going to talk to you like my favorite young students because you are my favorite young students. Friends, oh my goodness, we have a new book today. But the funny thing is, this isn't a new book. We've read this book a lot. I, you know how I know we've read this book a lot? is because look at the side, it's so well loved. We have to have a talk about how this book has to go to the book doctor. But that's not what we're gonna talk about right now. We're gonna talk about 
brown bear. Do you guys remember a few weeks ago, we learned the letter B. Does anybody remember how to say B with your hands? Shocking enough, I'm gonna say, if you have a class of 20, 15 of them will immediately go like this. But friends, that's right, this is, you're totally right. This was the sign for B. Does anyone remember how to say what sound the letter B makes? And again, about three fourths of them will go ba ba ba. They will not go ba ba ba. They will move it because that's how they they made that connection, that muscle memory. Ba ba ba. You're right. Now, does anybody remember how we say bear in sign language? That's exactly right, friends. Bear. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna read this book, and every time I say the word bear, I want you to show me bear. All right, ready? You gotta use your best looking eyes. Okay. Brown, bear, brown, bear. What do you see? I see a red bird. <gasps> Friends, do you remember we learned the word bird too? Who remembers the sign for bird? <gasps> That's exactly right, bird. So we can do, we can do red bird too, ready? I see a red bird looking at me. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? I see yellow duck. Okay, blah, 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 blah. I see a blue horse looking at me. Going through, book's done. It's great. You've used those animals. Awesome. Again, they will be engaged far more than they've been before. Now let's get salad and some entrees. Friends, remember we read this book yesterday and you were so good. I was talking to the other teacher about how you remembered bear and you remembered bird. And what do those letters start with? <gasps> B, you're right, everyone pop up B. B, 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 B. Gosh, you guys are so good. Okay, but do you remember a couple of weeks ago we were working on colors? Well, I noticed this book has a lot of colors in it. And I want to do the ones that start with the B. So I need your best looking eyes. Now I need your best looking ears. And every time we say a color, I want you to do the color. And then again, brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird. I see a blue horse looking at me. Blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? White dog. I see a black sheep looking at me. Black sheep. So one, we've done one side of animals. We've done one side of colors. We can mix them together, but then here is the full buffet. Open, get all you want. Friends, I am so impressed. I'm so impressed. You remembered all of the animals. You've remembered all the colors, but I wanna try something different today. Let's turn our voice off. Ready? Make a V. Blah, blah, blah. Voice off. I'm not going to say the words. When we get to brown and black and blue and bird and bear. I, let's just use our hands. Do you think we can do that? I think so too. Okay, are you ready? Let's start. What do you see? I see a red looking at me. Red, red, what do you see? I see a yellow duck, yellow duck, yellow duck. What do you see? I see a horse looking at me. Horse, horse, what do you see? I see a green frog, I see a purple cat, I see a white dog, I see a Sheep looking at me. Sheep, sheep, what do you see? Now here's the funny thing. This is just with one letter. This is just with one letter and two animals. And this is assuming that you've only taught them the letter B. Because if you've taught them the letter C, they know cat. If you taught them the letter D, they know dog. If you've taught them, I don't know, what are the other words in here? Which is so funny. If you taught them, purple or white or any of the colors. Let's say you do an entire color exploration. This book, voice off. Now here's the deal. 
Yes, this read aloud is going to take longer, but it is going to be the most exciting read aloud these children have ever heard. The reasoning behind, again, is because far often, far often we read this book to our kids. We read it to them. They don't participate. And when they participate, they're actively engaging. And when they're actively engaging, they're actively learning. And when they're actively learning, they're actively loving. We want them to love literacy. So make a little bit of extra time for that rug so that they can break this down. Now, again, the more words you know, the more you can change any book. If you're doing Llama Llama Red Pajama, all you really need to know, well, first off, Llama, does this not look like the cutest little llama ever? Llama. Or, sorry, red, pa red pajama. So that's the thing. If it has a color in it, feel free to insert it. If it has an animal in it, and you're going to say that animal, I'm trying to look at my child's books. Kitty's first moon. Like anything that has an animal and that you are actively learning, Learn that animal. They sent a monkey, so I sent him back. If the children have learned it, feel free to incorporate and include them within that. So, we're gonna do another example. Who here uses this book? Yeah, you do. Chris is like, bam, bam. Yeah, Chris, you use this book. We all use this book. How many of you have had your children sign along with this book? Yeah. Oh, not many of you. And if you have, yay. If not, you will now. All right, ready? I'm going to read it. If you want to sign along with me, yay. But here's the deal. Every time, if you're doing it this way, every time, that you are introducing a letter is a wonderful opportunity to reread this book. Because if you're like, friends, last week we learned B and this week we're learning C. This is funny, we can do this book again and now we can say A, B, and C. Let's go. And let me show you what this book looks like if we especially do voices off. A told and told C, I'll meet you at the top. Ready, this is a really favorite. Coconut tree, show me coconut. Coconut tree, makes sense, right? You're shaking the coconut tree. We said D to E, F, G. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom, will there be enough room? Here comes H up the coconut tree. And I and J and tag along, K. Okay? All the way up the coconut tree. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom, will there be enough room? Look who's coming, it's L, M, N, O, N, P. And we'll just wait till the, it falls. And Q, R, S, and T, U, V. Still more, there's W, X, Y, and Z. The whole alphabet, the oh, no, couple lock. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom. Again, the entire purpose of this is if you are going to take 20-ish minutes to read a story to your children, children who have very low executive function skills, that may get squirrely or wiggly because you've already done calendar, you've already done all of your jobs, you've already taken attendance, and that book may come at the very end because you're going to do something with it to dismiss with it. It might be the last thing and they may be sitting there and spacing out. And that's the one thing you don't want. Re-energize, re-engage, and again, if you've never, if this is not even, if you're like, you know what, I got super littles, we don't do, we don't even do letters. You can just show them the let a word in the book that you are about to read. Just be like, friends, we're gonna read a book today about a cat. This is how we say cat with our hands. Show me cat. Perfect, cat. Cat starts with the letter C, cat, cat. So every time I get to the word cat in our story, we're gonna go like this. And they will say, yes, of course. You're a beautiful teacher. Be like, I know, calm down. Um, but then yes, okay? And again, the entire purpose of this is just to support what is fundamentally an extremely component, an important component of, of our career. All right, so I'm going to briefly pop in the chat because I saw a lot of people typing things. I know you sign with your right hand, correct? 
but you can sign. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can sign with your left hand. You do not have to sign. Whatever works for you. If you are if you are right handed, that's great. If you're left handed, I am jealous. If you're ambidextrous, blessings. If um, I, I have some friends who are deaf who um, are missing. Well, he's not missing from birth. He's missing from very poor accidents of sticking his hand into a lawnmower. He's missing parts of his finger. I know. Fun story when they tell it to you. He's missing parts of his fingers on this hand. These two. Um, he will sign with this um, and just uh, keeps like go. It'd be like cat. However, um, I'm familiar with and his friends are familiar with what it looks like. If you feel more comfortable and if this, if signing, ooh, excuse me, if signing with your left hand doesn't change anything and you have that fluidity, love it, jealous, do whatever. However, don't make any, uh, any accomplishments. Um, yeah, so yes. Also, I love that your six-year-old's really excited about our stories. Ready, show me stories, stories. And if you can switch between them, yes do it. I can only switch between things when I have something in this hand and then this one takes 10 times faster or slower to sign. So loves. Um, I love exactly. You can sign the letter song, uh, letter song. Elaine said again, like if you're like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Sing with me. Um, here's a funny thing about anytime you're also doing sign. Let's just acknowledge several things are happening. It is so much fine motor skill. It is so much fine motor skill. It is so much, so much dexterity. It is the idea of, of imagine, if you will, when you are learning a new language. And this language is it, it involves so much like cognition for you to be able to see, translate, put out. So please, like if you are gonna do the alphabet song, love it. It takes you five minutes to do it, who cares? It takes you 20 minutes to read a story, whatever. If they're in it, keep it going. All right, we got some more messages. Boop, 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 boop. If you sign just the W on your left hand, is that bad? No, that's totally fine. Like if, if, but also again, if it looks different, it's okay. We all look different. So we're all right. We do a sign word every morning. My kids love it. Yeah, they do. Alyssa, if you don't mind me asking, what sign words are you doing this week? And you could pop it in the chat. Because I'm curious if you do sign words that correspond with the um, season. Ready? What do you think sign this is? It's happening right now. Well, it shouldn't be, but it is. It is. It's spring. Nice job. It's spring. And it looks like what it is. Ready? It's coming up. <gasps> Boop. Right now, there's a lot of ready flowers. Flowers. So I talked about this in our last webinar, a smidge. My biggest, my biggest like school of thought when it comes to inserting sign is again, if you're working on the letters, work on it then, perfect. This happens at rug time. We take rug time to teach stuff like this. That's perfect. We also teach rug time to introduce topics, topics that we are going to be talking about, topics that are we, we are going to be taking on and exploring. My rule of thumb, if you are going to say something more than five times, learn the sign. It just makes sense because you have to ask yourself, why do I keep spring? Why do I keep saying the word spring? Why do I? Why? Because you want them to learn it. You don't say it because you love the way it makes you like you make it sound like no, you say it because you want the children to know the seasons. So if you want them to learn it, it just makes sense to give it to them every way humanly possible. And in this case, spring. You're gonna be talking about flowers for the next, I don't know, four months. 
flowers. Just, you know, <gasps> did you guys see all the beautiful flowers outside? They were popping up all over. Oh, what's going to happen when it gets really cold? Oh, they're all going to die. Maybe not. Who knows? We'll wait and see. Okay, let's crumbs. We have 20 minutes. We are going to get to behavior modification, but I just want to um, put in a fall. Or actually, you can do a couple things. You could do like leaves are falling down, which is actually my favorite. It's fall because then it shows you what's falling down because snow is this, winter is this. So fall. And it also seems less terrible. It looks like a pretty sign. Oh. Um, does anyone have any signs about how to support your read alouds during rug time with this? Because if not, then we're going to switch to transitions and then we're going to go to behavior modifications and then we're going to wrap this this doggy bag up. Okay, cool. Well, if you ever have any more questions, ready? Questions. It looks like the question mark. Questions. If you have any questions, just ask. Ask. Just put it in the chat. Okay. Let's move over really quickly to some um, some transitions because again, from from our read, excuse me, from our rug time, we always transition out. We transition to the bathroom. So uh, tea for toilet and shake bathroom. So you can be like. It's time to go to the bathroom. Wait, ready? I have to sit up a little bit so you can see my whole self. Okay. Hypothetically, we will all be going, ready, outside. It looks like it's just the same as white, outside. Today, this is today, two Ys. This is also the sign for now. Now, today. Today, we're gonna go outside. So I need you to grab your, what do you think you need to get? Yeah, you gotta get your coat. Sadly, some of us still need to get our hats and hopefully not, but we might have to grab our gloves. You don't know. So you're on rug, you're transitioning out, telling the kids what, oh, boots. Oh, I hope we don't need boots. Boots. That would be frustrating. Rain boots. All right, so let's get our coats on, our hats on, our gloves on and our boots and we're gonna go play outside. Okay, so ways that we can get off of this rug in a really fun way. We've talked about this a little bit before. This is our opportunity to kind of meet our kiddos where they are. We wanna really be able to, um, the purpose of rug, or excuse me, transitioning off the rug time is almost like unbeknownst to them, a little bit of a pop quiz. It's fun, but we are able to see it's like a mini assessment. We're able to see what they have taken in over the last 20 minutes. So I'm going to pull up my friends who are currently at the top. All right. Uh, on my rug right now, I have Krista King. I have Mary Roy. I have Carrie, uh, Karen Finkel, and I have Tammy Lawson. You are my three. You're my four. Excuse me. Four friends on the rug. All right. Um, Krista, what's the sign for a uh, bear? Go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Perfect. All right, Mary, um, do you remember the sign for blue? <gasps> yeah, shake it, girl. All right, go to the bathroom. Nice job. All right, Miss Karen, what is the sign for that bird? Woo, perfect. Go to the bathroom. Thank you. And Miss Tammy, what letter are we working on this week? B, and everyone do a dance party. B, B, B. Everyone still on the rug throws up their Bs. B, 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 B. Great. Now, here's the deal. If I was like, Miss Tammy, what's the sign for B? And she's like, then I need to know, then maybe Tammy and I should have a little bit of extra time at recess to chat. Or if I said, Krista, what's the sign for bear? And she was like, then I'd be like, okay. All right, cool. Again, it's our opportunity to work on whatever we've talked about, whatever we've read. If we read Dear Zoo and we've talked about a lion and a giraffe and a dog, then those are the signs that we're going to use. If we've talked about colors, whatever we've done, we can get off the rug in a way that children, gosh, I really hate any transition on the rug that takes a long time because then the kids start like, like 
crawling around and you're like, we gotta go fast. So if you do, what's the sign, what's the sign, everybody, and then every four kids, everybody put up that letter, put up that B, ba, 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 and then just have like a two second dance party, you are now getting them back engaged. So ba, 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 bring it back down. All right, you, sign for a bird, do, 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 bathroom. Like, school is fun. It's our, like nobody else will ever have this kind of fun with them. They don't, they don't have time. We get that time. Let's make it a good time. All right, so with that being said, we're going to make it a really good time because we are going to learn a brand new game which goes into our behavior modification. We're, we're gonna teach you, excuse me, I am going to teach you a game that you are never ever not going to play. You will play this every week. You will definitely play it every week now that it's spring. It's very similar to Simon Says, but nobody ever loses. And it's a really great way to work on receptive skills, meaning like, recept uh, um, this is listening. Think of it like an old grammar phone, like, hello, what did you say? Like, I'm taking in information through my ears, I'm taking in information through my eyes. Okay, this is also a wonderful thing to do at rug time. When you are having like, the, the, the finger play will not cut it. I would always do this on my rug times on Fridays. This was our Friday, like, throw down rug time. It's called please, because I'm going to teach you the sign for please in a minute, but I'm teaching it to you now, so you know. Please, hand flat against the chest, rub it around. Uh, please, for, remember it is forehead, for me. Please for me. So, we do have to learn a few more words. In this case, we need to learn stop. Stop. Think of it like the guillotine coming down. If you happen to be uh, left-handed, it looked like that. But whatever way it works, you've, it ends it. It means stop. Now, here's the funny thing. 90% of sign really has to do with your face. There's a difference between me being like, stop, versus I don't know why I gave a thumbs up, but I did. That was weird. Oh, crumbs. I should disable this for a sign language because <laughs> otherwise this will be very confusing. So, um. We're gonna play please for me. Now, cool thing is for please for me, your hands can be your feet. It sounds crazy, but if I need you to walk, we can walk like this. If I need you to walk fast or run, or they can be like this, walk. And you're gonna do it this way. Whatever your non-dominant hand is will be the floor, we'll call it. And your dominant hand will be your fingers. So. What do you think I'm having them do right now? Yeah, I'm having them jump. But uh oh, what are they doing now? They're jumping on one foot. What about this? They're dancing. Dance, dance, dance. Whatever. Can, can. <laughs> They're running. This is your ground or a seat. These are their legs. Sit. Sit flat, sit. We will use this a lot, friends, sit. So how this game goes is you tell everybody, friends, this is a quiet game. There will be no talking in this. So right now, everyone take, your, put, take, a, uh, take your voice. I'm gonna show you something and then you are going to use your best looking eyes. You're gonna take it in and then you're gonna do it. Okay, and it looks like this. You don't have to play at home. It's been a long day. But if you want to, you can. So you say. And then as soon as they stand up, you go, ooh, nice. This is nice. Hand flat, nice. Okay. Make sure everyone's ready. And when they all stop, you tell them, nice. Then you do it again. This is a really great way to work on all of these receptive skills. And then when you're all done playing, you can have them skip, you can have them jump, you can have them do anything, just make your fingers do it. Children are very smart, you do not have to tell them. They understand these are legs, and they understand to do exactly what your legs are doing. And then at the end, you can tell them to gallop, you can canter, you can trot, Whatever, but tell them to 
Sit flat. Ooh, nice. All right, so when we're on the rug and we're doing this, this is the start of them being primed for you to give them behavior redirections, we'll call it, because you've already taught them to stop. You've already really started to um, enforce this idea that they always need to have their best look looking eyes on because your class is not just an auditory class. Your class is a visual because you're not saying, please for me, jump. They now know that their eyes and their senses are going to be a large part of the class. You do not need to sit down and be like, friends, we're going to be a quiet class. No, 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 no. They get it. They get it. And when you start doing signs throughout the way to support this, it will only go to help. And what I mean by that is if they're like uh, the sign for yes. Ready? We'll go through our list now. Yes. So head nodding. Yeah. We do not have to take rug time to teach these. This is simple. It goes, um, Miss Rachel, Miss Rachel, Miss Rachel, are we going outside today? Yeah, we're going to go outside. I might have to say yes a few times, but by the end of the week, Miss Rachel, Miss Rachel, do we need our coats? And I can be having a conversation with somebody else. No. You can do it fingers together or fingers apart. It's however you feel comfortable. No. And again, always use a good old fashioned, like reinforce with your head. If it's a yes, make sure to nod. If it's a no, make sure to shake. And again, after a week of saying, no, we're not going to do that. All you have to do is be like, no. In fact, you see something going down on the other side of the rug. You know this. Children will look at you before they do anything naughty. And if they're looking at you, you can look at them and be like, you never had to say their name. You never had to point anything out. They knew, they knew, they knew that was a, that was meant for them. Best part about that, there's two other kids. They were looking at you. They think that's also for them. You kind of blanket the whole class with a good old fashioned. Okay, so with that being said, uh, yes, no, um, agree. I like teaching agree because I'm a really big fan of children not being egocentric and recognizing that other people have ideas. It's just a why, and you just link people. Oh, you, I, you, you want to, you really like dogs? I agree. I really like dogs too. Oh, Brittany really likes dogs. You guys both really like dogs. We all like dogs. That's pretty cool. How do, was, how do we say dogs? Oh, that's right, dogs. Okay. Um, yes, no, agree, stop. Again, guillotine. A knife, whatever, stop. Please, we've learned this because we're playing please for me. Please for me. Sorry, another way to re, um, to remember this is you hit somebody and you feel bad about it. Sorry, because it looks just like please, but you make a fist. Sorry. Another really great way to start working on emotions is in sign language because again, 90% of it has to do with your face. So if you're happy, you can be happy. If you're sad, it looks like sad. If you're mad, <clears throat> it looks like mad. If you're excited, it looks like excited. If you're shocked, <gasps> it looks like you're shocked or scared. If you're tired, it looks like you want to curl up in a little ball. You're tired. When we're doing, sorry, when we're doing so many um, interactions with children where we say things like, how do you think your friend feels? Tell me how you feel. Like one of our top things that we're working on with children, especially during rug time, is emotional intelligence. Children have a lot of big feelings. I have a two-year-old. I know this. Um, and being able to give them the words to help them identify so we can move past that is huge. So when you see a child be like, I know you're frustrated, like showing them like, oh, you're sad. Oh, I'm, I know that was a loud noise. That was scary. It just goes to help because here's the deal. When that child is feeling that really, 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 really big feeling in that moment, they may not have the wherewithal. Most of us wouldn't. To be in a hyperventilating, someone took my toy situation and be like, I am so mad. No, but you'd be like, and you can sign, I'm mad. 
when when a kid is and you don't know what happened and what's going on, they can just tell you I'm sad. And they can tell you like they can point <laughs> and tell you why they're sad or if they're hurt, hurting as you circle whatever part hurts. Um, but again, emotions, something we really work on during work time. We are priming our class in all of these ways to know that we are a very um, sensorial class. We use it everything. So let's get back to this behavior modification so we can we can move on. Ready? Quiet. Um, thumb to lips or voice off, either one. Weight, um, weight can go like this in front of you. Weight can go like this from the side. I always do it from the side strictly because I normally have a guitar in front. So I, I couldn't reach if I do it. Weight, I love weight. I tell this story all the time. Weight is iconic. These are all these people in a row when you're at the very end. This is a really wonderful thing when those children think that because you do not answer them in a nanosecond that you are not wait paying attention to them. You simply say, hold on one second, let me finish talking. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I totally understand. Yep, thank you so much. You were, you were talking to them the entire time. So, simple things of like sitting, like I need you all to sit and turn your voice off. Go to the bathroom, tea, toilet, shake. We're going outside, get your coats. How do our friends feel? They feel happy. That's um, if also if you do a really great good morning song, just asking everybody in sign every morning, be like, how do you feel today? You feel today? How do you feel today? I'm asking my friends, how do you feel? Happy. How do you feel? Sad. How do you feel? Tired. How do you feel? Hungry. Whatever. Um, but again, if you have any questions, so here's the deal. Now I'm going to give you the doggy bag. I'm going to start putting some stuff. You have this on your slides. But if you're not looking at it, I just want to give you some now. ASLpro.cc is a really great website. Um, it's from Gallaudet University. It kind of stinks on your um, phone. Uh, and frankly, sometimes your laptop, there's a lot of pop-ups. I know it sounds counterintuitive, <clears throat> but I highly suggest to like, if you're looking for a sign, go on to Google. Do not look at my face. Do not go on to YouTube. Do not go onto YouTube. Go onto Google and type in, what is the sign for blank? And what usually you will see within the first three will be sign savvy, sign savvy um, or life print. Either one of those will be one of the first. There's a gentleman with dark hair, um, kind of bald. Uh, he is wonderful. You'll see those little videos. This is a highly reputable, you're not gonna get any weird signs that aren't what they were supposed to be. Just safe bet, just click on one of those. If you decide to venture into the deep dark web, I cannot help you. Do not go there because like, I don't know what they're teaching you. Um, also, if you have any questions, I'm going to type in my email. And if you're like, hey, I really wanna know how to insert something into something else, feel free to email me. Um, I'm really big on following up with people who are super excited about about having that extra extra doggy bag where it's like, hey, I, I want to do this, but I want to do it with eighth with eighth graders. What does it look like? Or blank, blank, blank. Um, yesterday I was doing this for Georgia and we ended up taking a huge detour into like, how do we teach history with sign? So with all that being said, lots of options. I'm here for you, but I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of my friends. Um, for sitting here uh, and enjoying us today. Uh, yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, it's five o'clock. Your turn, Karen. Sorry.